So welcome to episode 82 of Theater School Rejects, the podcast. Clawing your way to that 100 mark. Gotta get there, man. Then we're going to do a brand, brand new theme podcast. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to have a theme. Um, and, I don't know, maybe I do like different themes and do like 10 episodes of them. Like, like, like the one about how to catch a murderer or something, how to make a murderer. Not like that, <laughs> but like seasons. Like this right. season we talk about... 60s cartoons. <laughs> 60s cartoons are great. Well, they're remaking... my Herculoids movie. <laughs> I'd watch the shit out of that. Yeah. <laughs> a little, like, like, fat rhino thing that would shoot ping pongs out of its horn. Oh, man, that was my favorite. It was like a triceratops with, like, lightning and, yeah. and the wrong number of horns. And a uh, little bloop bop thing, the blob guy. Yeah, but when they just gleep from, like, the actual, like, <laughs> chosen the pussycats. <laughs> I think it was a cross-pollinization, probably. Well, I mean, like, it, it's the same character, right? Like, so there's, like, three of them in, in the Herculoids. Yeah. Couldn't they form into one if they needed to or some shit? I don't know. I haven't watched it in a long, long time. And I think they made an appearance on Harry Birdman, but... Uh, my friend, the, the guy who hosts uh, Thousand Baby Worlds, the guy who hosts Thousand yeah. Baby Worlds, we used to watch uh, Thundar the Barbarian. That's, and, like, uh, before it became Herculoids? Because that's Thundar, right? Yeah, Thundar the Barbarian. It's a, it's, it's a side-by-side with Herculoids. But, but Thundar is the, is the guy, right? No, no. Oh, I thought... Hercules is a whole separate cartoon, I believe. I thought he was the husband. No, no. Or father, or you want to fucking call it. No, I mean, I I could be wrong. I think Hercules is his own cartoon, and Thundar was his own thing. I'm just hitting the button. Yeah. Um, Okay, Uh, so Thundar, which which they they made a sitcom out of, right? No. Well, they made one, they made a... It was more about He-Man. Oh, I thought it was like more Thundar. Okay. Uh, That was called Son of something or other. Yeah, I, I saw like, the AV reviews and never actually watched it because. Yeah, all right. All right. Anyway, so go so, on. So your friend yeah. watches Thundar. We're watching Thundar. And, How stones uh, were you? No, it was before that. And. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is like uh, when you're kids. Yeah. <laughs> the. Uh, uh, his sidekick is named Upla. Okay. And my friend just kind of theorized like, well, because Thundar takes place in a post-apocalyptic world. And so, like, he figures that whatever transformed everybody, there's a dude who was wearing a UCLA, UCLA shirt, ah. transformed into Ookla, and they're just a fucking he's Ookla, I guess. So he he's a UCLA. Yeah. 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 So, like, dozens of years later, and the internet is invented, and I'm looking up Thunder the Barbarian because I'm probably avoiding And it turns out Ookla was. It turns out the guy <laughs> named the character after driving by a UCLA sign was like, Ookla, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> essentially, my friend was right. His theory. Deep theory about Thundar the Barbarian, completely validated. That's not going to wind up in a video, I don't think. I don't think we do a lot of Thundar the Barbarian videos. <laughs> but we should. We should. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I... That's <laughs> uh, someone cool is doing Johnny Quest. Last I heard, I think it just keeps bouncing around. But I think like someone cool is doing it. I was never into Giant Quest until, and I'm still not. But like, I was, but I was sort of interested in the in the parody version, the Venture yeah, Brothers. Venture Brothers. Yeah. Brothers is brilliant. Well, it was, and then I haven't watched like the last three seasons because they took like forever to make them. Yeah. And I completely lost all, interest. Yeah. You, you, you have a window. Every every season is awesome. They make it worth it. Yeah. I, I, you can only hold my attention for so long, and then <laughs> if you don't like follow up, that's. Well, I saw an author on Twitter said, "There's no, nothing I found is better marketing than writing more books." <laughs> and it wasn't like he was bragging about it. He's like, people ask me for marketing tips, and I'm like, I wish I could tell them, but there's nothing I found that works better. <laughs> <laughs> and I found that myself, um, which is why, I, well, one of the reasons why I published my novels as like six or seven novellas first, and then string them together as a serial novel, more or less. Like. Uh... Charles Dickens used to do in that newspaper or some shit. Yeah, exactly. And for similar, well, for somewhat similar reasons in that, like, you know, I then, well, for me, it's mostly about getting something up right. so I don't have to, like, wait six months to see a tangible result of my work. Right. But also the idea that if I have six novellas of, like, 10,000 words and then one novel, like, that's seven chances for someone to see one of my books. Right. You know, they're like, oh, that's a funny title. Cool. Right. Oh look, it's part of a series. <laughs> oh, I could just, I don't have to read all six books, I can just read the novel it's collected in. Hey, shoots and scores. 
That's the way I read comic books now. I just get the like the six issue collections. Yeah. I don't want an individual issue. I don't want. It. Who has the time for that? Well, it's insane. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. I'm kind of broke. I don't really keep up as much as I should. But it's like smatterings. Like every once in a while, I have a few extra bucks. I'm like, oh shit. Comic book store. <laughs> I can get Moon Knight three now. <laughs> yeah. When I had to start paying for my own comic books, my habit of buying became very different. <laughs> like, oh, oh, these are not worth the money. <laughs> I was in high school. I went on a rash of buying number ones of everything because the independent comic boom just started. Oh, you're like, I'm gonna cash it in. No, I wasn't that. I was just like, oh, I want to be like, I want to ground floor something. <laughs> nice. And uh, during that period, when fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out. Oh wow, so you had number one at Eastman and Lard? I had number two, which is the big one, the big value one. Oh wow. And then the uh, classic fucking, the reason why it's valuable, my dad threw all my shit away. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's, that, that's the comic book that could have gone. I don't know, yeah. was it worth 50 bucks now? 100? Yeah, it's not, I mean, it wouldn't have fun bought me a house. It was like, no. It would have maybe bought me a week of groceries, but it's still, you know. You could have. What could have been? You could have been like Kevin Smith, only like. You would have financed the five minutes short. <laughs> yeah, I don't think my collection. Twenty thousand dollars. My collection fit in like a headboard of my bed. <laughs> it wasn't, and it featured mostly Ghost Rider. I had a, like I had all eighty-one issues of Ghost Rider, the original run of that, which is worth like a sandwich, I think. <laughs> Goes right. Yeah, well, we talked about like I would go back and collect like the you know the old run of like Iron Fist and Power right. Man Iron Fist. I had those. <laughs> and that was great because I could like issue 78, <laughs> 10 years old, in mint condition, worth two dollars. I'll take it. <laughs> and I was excited. I had Cra uh, Craven's last time. I read that all happened. Yeah, I read that in, in real time. So I have those kind of books. I don't know that one. I, mean, I don't know if those are valuable or not. Well, nothing. No, when, when it's collected in a graphic novel, I think the actual like comic books go way down. Yeah. Because people are like, I'd rather read the graphic novel. Yeah. But so what else do you have an issue with one of? Uh, Samurai, this Canadian black and white comic book. Uh, it's very like stylistic and kind of like a mix between. Let's go like up this far and turn around. Super realism, I guess, and then magnet. A lot of blood. I had number one issue of Spy Boy, and I got that like 20 years ago. <laughs> I got, uh, <laughs> that was a Peter David comic. Did you read that or see it? No. Oh, it's it's really good. Like, well, the first like eight issues are really good, and then like the quality dips down a lot. I had, uh, I, had I think I had the complete run of Mage. I didn't realize it was the complete run. I just kept thinking, like, why can't I find more of this shit? There was a Sacramento company called like White Wolf or something like that. I bought all their shit and none of it took off. No. <laughs> like Fat Ninja. And, uh, I can't even remember their titles really. I just remember buying <laughs> Fat them. Ninja didn't take off. Who didn't see that coming? Right. That might not even be them. That might just be another. Like in the wake of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there was just a lot of like. A lot of. karate titles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Radioactive Mutant. That was the hamsters as well. That was Marvel, I think. That was their parody of the X-Men. And then. Marvel to the cash age. Uh. I don't oh. know. We were like. Not a lot of it was good, not a lot of it stuck. No, it wasn't. I, well, I tried to find like. Well. I would I go like to Maeve. I'd go to visit my folks in New York and they're that like, huge enormous comic book store in New York. Right. Um, in by the not by the East Village, but just in downtown New York. And I'd always go in there and just like just see just, just the longest row of comic books I've ever seen and try and like <laughs> and every time I go out and visit I try and find something that I'd never read before. Right. And so I found like the Pervert Club and I found <laughs> I found Spy Boy. Oh yeah. And then um, what else did I find? I found some other things that weren't but the Pervert Club was way cool, it was like twelve issues. And I actually emailed the author, huh. and and he, and he actually published my letter in one of his in the, in the last in the last comic book. <laughs> I was like, my letter's in a letter page, Yay. which I had never achieved up until then. <laughs> I don't even know I've ever I never even wrote. My brother got a uh, 
seemed like a personalized leather back from fucking uh, McFarlane. What's his name? Todd McFarlane? Todd McFarlane, yeah. He spawned, yeah. yeah. My, my brother wrote him like in his early Spider-Man days. Right. And so he wrote him back. <laughs> what was it? We said seems like. Was it actually personalized or no? Or you don't know? Like it, it's like it directly addressed his questions and shit. <laughs> so it was then? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's good. That's always, have, you, have you written to other authors? I haven't written to anyone. Um, I, I, have the one, I have one encounter with an author that I thought was really like one of those shitty fucking Twitter story moments. <laughs> where, uh, like, what had happened was is I was, still wasn't a writer, I was still a musician. I was living in the flop house in Sacramento, just a bunch of fucking people in it. And we we gotta explore that in depth at some point. Because uh, this is the fourth time you've referenced the flop house, Sacramento, the skinheads. No, and, it wasn't skinheads. Because well, no, it was, okay, so the, the flop house in Sacramento has been referenced. Right. And the skinheads, some of the skinheads were referenced. The skinheads, it was meth addicts. Okay. Were, oh, okay, uh, you clarified. It was, it was meth addicts. Yeah. But this is the same place. No, and, different places. Well, there still is this 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 mysterious <laughs> flop house right. that I'd like to dedicate an episode to exploring. Okay. But, but not, not today. Right. Not today. Just saying, just reminding myself <laughs> that, there, that, that that's an issue that needs to be explored. And I have not forgotten. Our dating video for you and the and the VW bus. Uh, I'm just gonna check with you when you video. You're not working, because I know you do the, the show running and stuff. Right. And I'm just gonna come during a day, because it feels like a daytime lighting kind of thing uh, with my video camera. I'm gonna do a five minute YouTube video, and then you're gonna be like just, you know, <laughs> submerged beneath all the 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 requests <laughs> to marry you, to marry you into the VW bus. I don't want to get married though. <laughs> no, we just get the request. Oh, sure. He's going dates. Believe me, <laughs> that will quickly winnow away the potential applicants. <laughs> Actually being exposed to you will do wonders <laughs> for changing their mind. <laughs> sure, like I've only gotten by on my channel. <laughs> you probably have, but but um We'll see. Yeah. Anyway, the point so, is, so, so yeah, so, so, so the, there, there was an artist there, and he wanted to do a comic, and we had been, like, collaborating, and it's, you know, he was going to draw it, so it was his dumb idea. Well, I want to do my dumb ideas. Um, well, yeah. And uh, I started reading Sandman, and I was like, holy shit, I have been thinking about comic books wrong. You can do all sorts of crazy shit in this. Why are we always doing this one thing? So you met Neil Gaiman? So I met Neil Gaiman at a, at a signing. It wasn't like a, you know, let's go fucking have dinner. Uh, it was just like we a hundred some odd people that you know, in that day. Okay. Uh, but it was a signing, and I was trying to think of a way to like go, hey, you you changed the way I think about writing. <laughs> but I'm dumb, and this is why I don't go on stand up. I'm dumb, and what I wanted to say was that. But instead, I was like, you know, I was writing a comic book for someone, and I read fucking Seasons of Mist, and I felt that's what I wanted to write. And so, he, like, and he goes, oh, don't worry. But he thought he was, what he had heard was, I had a story about the devil giving up the keys to hell. And then he wrote it. And so his response was still kind of awesome. So I didn't correct him because, oh, I'm dumb. <laughs> he goes, don't worry about it. You're not going to write it the same way I am. It's your story. Just write it. And I was like, that's awesome. All right, that's not what I was saying, but that's an awesome answer. So I'm just going to fucking walk away. <laughs> well, you see, I... You... There's so much there. You're like, I can't do stand up because I'm dumb. Like, there's not a fucking bunch of assholes with a fucking room temperature IQ doing stand up. Some of them quite successfully. And then second, like, like that. I, actually, the story got better because he misunderstood you. You got a better answer than you would have gotten to your other question. And what was he gonna say to your actual question? Like, I don't know. I you changed that. the way I think about writing. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, whereas weirdo. I'm worried. Like, uh, you know, you, I think I have the same idea as you. Don't worry. You can interpret it differently. So you're your own story as long as it's your idea that you're coming from. Yeah. Like, one of the two stories of an artist saying something to another artist that I use to fucking inform the stuff I want to do. And I told you about. Well, I told you about like, at the sci-fi convention at Los Con talking to um, Tim Powers and telling him he was wrong about his own book. <laughs> um, and I told him that's something he wrote in one of his books. In, I, told him about, I told him about how, that, how it came out, but I told him, I said, I read this book, you know, you wrote in the 80s, and I read it when I was in college, and it inspired me. He goes, what part? I said, one of the characters says, women secretly prefer mean, stupid men. And I'm <laughs> like, that just made so much sense to me. And I've shared that with all of my friends. He's like, yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Archie Bunker effect. You decided the wrong guy. <laughs> this, oh. These little brick inlays look like the old style razors. 
Okay. It's like this weird pattern. It's the same kind of. Sure. It's like a suicide sidewalk. Suicide sidewalk <laughs> coming to coming this fall. <laughs> the, the WN <laughs> suicide sidewalk. Uh, um, but anyways, that was what was it? oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Well, no, I'm trying to think of other authors I met. I met this one dude, John DeChancey, because right. I was in the green room. So I was, was going to talk to the Los Angeles site. It's a different, different, Los Con, same venue, a right. different year. Right. I was trying to promote my independent books, and I, and I got signed up for Speak at a couple different events. I got to go into the green room. Right. And I met an author, John DeChancey, who had read, like, his castle books. And he wrote this, like, Castle Nowhere, Castle... In whatever, just right. wrote eight books with Castle in it, and they were humorous <laughs> fantasy, yeah, yeah, and like, dope. they were medium good. <laughs> and I met him, and I'm like, hey, it's good to meet you. I'm, I'm a you, big fan. Did you say they were medium good? I, I said I said I'm a fan. Okay. And he, and he gives me this fucking like, just, oh yeah, of course. Like, I got that from lots of people. I said, I didn't say I was a big fan. I was like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, I was, a, I was somewhat a fan. They were okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, that didn't go very well. <laughs> and I'm just the biggest asshole for like, and I would have taken it if like Tim Powers had been a big asshole because his books right. are fucking amazing, right? Right. But I'm like, I'm lukewarm about your books. They were moderately funny in points, <laughs> you know? Like, what the fuck? You, you take anything you can get, buddy. <laughs> You're not the hot girl at the dance. <laughs> You're, you're a 7 and a 7.5 in heels and a cocktail dress. <laughs> anyway, John, it's a chance that you're an asshole. And that's the name of this podcast. <laughs> and you can find my co-host at Crash Ryan on Twitter. 